weekend. Boy, she can let you. She wanted me to read it, of course I couldn't see to read it, so she read a lot of it to me. But she didn't get one fourth of it. But boy, you could sure get some family history on that. All the way back to when uh, the old friends came to this country. Yeah, back to yeah, and all that. oh yeah. Before they came to this country. That's what I mean. Before they Cause uh. Let's see, well, no, one, see like right, no, uh, it's a Grandma O'Quinn's right people. There. Let's see, how did that go? Thanks Grand for that delicious lunch. Oh, you're welcome. And Mina, I'll see you before you go back. Okay, good. Back down here. Uh, yeah, and it was, well, I'm glad I got to see you again. Thanks for the lovely well, quill. Well, I'm you're glad welcome. you got to see me, Dorothy. <laughs> she didn't hear you. Eat nothing. I'm glad to have you. Eat nothing. Sit here, it was nice meeting you. Anyway, uh, Grandma O'Quinn's people came from uh, England, the Burnans. That Burnan is, is English. But some way, there's a Scotch-Irish in there. No, that's on Grandpa's side. Grandpa was Scotch-Irish. His mother was Scotch-Irish. One was Scotch and one was Irish. One parent. So that was Grandpa, Grandpa O'Quinn. And Grandma O'Quinn, hers was Vernon, and I forgot what the other name was. One parent was, was Vernon, that was an Englishman. But I don't know what the other one was. I can't, I can't remember. She's got all of that stuff, and boy, it makes them, anybody that's interested in genealogy would really lap it up. Yeah. That's who it's on. It did nothing on the no, one. it's on O'Quinn's. It's on Grandpa O'Quinn's side. She didn't get, nothing on she didn't get anything on Grandma's to amount to anything. And my guess would have been if you're going to trace it back, you're going to trace the burner for the back. Daddy, isn't that video Well, I guess she would if she could find out somebody that, that uh, had some information on them. I don't know. Well, they've got a genealogical, genealogical society now that's all over the country, all over the world, really. Well, she's got them from all over the United States. Genealogical State. library right here in Houston. <coughs> I threatened to go check up on that myself the whole time. I got a deal one time about a family history of the Scarbers. Well, that one would be easy to trace. Well, I tell you, with the one I'd like to have, I'd like to find the one that uh, tells why Grandpa Shader committed suicide. Well, that's, you ain't gonna find that. That's what I'd like to know. Well, that only goes back to 1900. You'd have to get that out of his head. Well, so they'd have a reason. Grandma had a, a letter that he, a note, I don't know which it was, that he wrote and left her when she went over to, she went over to Angus over in Alexandria. And while she was over there, he wrote this note or this letter, whatever it was. And when they came home from over to Angus, Grandpa was laying on the floor in the bedroom with a gun strapped to him up here around his arms and around his waist, and around his knees, and around his ankle, and his brains were scattered all over the floor in, in blood. But, and and she, she'd get that letter. I can remember seeing her get that letter down and read it. I don't know the times when I was a little bitty old kid, but she would never tell one of her children why he committed suicide. So you know how people are about a thing like that. Oh, he had the family in Germany. That's the reason he committed suicide, and he's about to bring him back to Germany to make him straighten things out or something. But I don't know. I don't know what happened later. Well, how about the, uh, the, the Shadle side? That's the ones I'm talking about. Grandpa and Grandpa yeah. Shadle. Oh, no. That's, that was Grandpa and Grandpa. Grandpa, 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 Grandpa. Grandma's Shadle Nathan. Grandma, yeah. You might have your great grandma. That's all I ever asked. That's right. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, I remember the name Damon. Yeah. Thank you. I beg your pardon. Yeah. And that was, he was uh, Grandpa, Grandpa and Shadle's parents. Louis Shadle's parents were the first generation to come to this country. Is that right? I don't know what Grandpa's name was. I never did know what his name was no, except. He's talking about, did they come from Germany? Yeah. Grandpa Shadle. Both no. Both. Grandma, Grandma Shadle and her family came here. They landed in New Orleans, and Grandma was a small child. Yeah. Or did but then Grandpa Shadle, or Great Grandma Shadle, was born in the United States, right? No. I thought one of them was born in the United States. Grandma was, not Grandpa. The Shadles, the first Shadle came to this country from Germany. And that was Grandma Shadles, I mean Grandpa Shadles. 
Joe, your mother. Grandpa Shay was going to say it. I thought you said Grandpa Shay was a kid when she got to New Orleans. No, she she was brought up. Well, I don't know. She might have been born in New Orleans. I don't remember now. I did know all of that stuff. But she, that's been years ago. I don't ever have any but family to talk to. Did they originate from Hamburg? No. They they came from uh, Hamburg. Grandpa came from Hamburg, Germany. That's what he said. I thought you said Frank. Oh yeah, yeah. That's where he came from. But I don't know where Grandma's people. Of course, they probably came from some little place on the countryside, and they probably the boat left from Hamburg. Yeah. He's recording everything Sam said. Did you cut it off? Yeah, it's it's on. Yeah, the lights blinking. <laughs> That's how I know that one's recording. Yeah. Because I I'll never That's remember any of this unless I have <laughs> some way to take it down. You know what, Steve? But Grandpa's, Grandpa's father was the first one, Grandpa Shadles. Uh, father was the first one to come from he, Germany. He was the one that came from Germany, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, neither I don't even, those. I don't even know, I never have never known what his given name was. You know, you're a fourth generation American. Uh, see, that's about the same way it happened on the, on the Fitzpatrick side, as I understand it, you know, that they, they, uh, brothers came over here yeah, about 1900. Well, 1900. Grandpa and them. I've seen that. It's real bright. It's a bright thing for nothing, you know. They came over here in the 1800s, Grandpa Shadle and, and Grandma's. Uh, well, Grandpa Shadle was born in what, 1890 or something like that, wasn't it? 1885? My daddy, he's born in 1874. And Mama was born in 1881. She was seven years younger than Daddy. So they had to get, get away from 1900. And they married in uh, 1900. They had the first child, which is me, in, in uh, 1901. So they, would you say they came to this country around the 1800s? In the, in the early 1800s. Early? Yeah, because Grandma Shadle was born in 1858. Now I had to figure that out. No, that's not, that's not the... Uh, where she was probably living, she was a kid, but she was probably living there in Pineville when the Civil War was. And I'll tell you something else. Grandma Shader was uh, 16 years old when my daddy was born. And he was another one of those seven-month babies. So, well, back in those days, you know, when you were engaged, it was considered marriage, so it was kind of a practice. Well, I didn't know that before. Yep. That's why you got this breach of promise law on the books. I had pictures of Stephanie. Because you promised to marry a girl as soon as you were going to bed with her. So you couldn't take advantage of her if you promised to marry her. And with you had to keep your promise. You had to pay for the money. So what? You want one of these? Believe it, you know. Mama was born, I mean, I was born in 1901. Your mother was born in 1903. Your uncle Ed in 1905. And then your uncle Brian in 1915. That's Mama's four kids. And I don't remember, I think. Do you remember what year your mother and daddy married? I don't. No, I sure don't. Well, you were born. I was born in 36. Yeah. They married in 35. They married in 35. But I can't remember what. And in the May. They married in May. But I don't remember the exact date. It was either the 16th or 17th. Because Alva's mama and, and daddy married in May. And they married on, uh, on the 16th, 17th, and Theo married in May, and either the 16th, 17th. So I can't separate the two. But I know Theo was, was uh, married in 1935. Okay, how many, how many kids were involved with the... I didn't know it. Let's see, there was Uncle Oscar. Was, there were seven. Daddy was the first one. And Aunt 
Katie was the second one. She was the one that lived in Middle Rock, Arkansas. She and her husband had a big dairy farm up there. And um, they never did have any children. Now, I got a lot of this when he was messing with that piece of dirt down there. And that man had it in his records. That's, so that's the way I got it. Um, now, start me over again. Where did I stop? Katie Lewis and Katie. Auntie, well then Aunt Nettie, and, and her name was Antoinette, and they called her Nettie. All right, she lived in Freeport, and then there was, um, there was three, and Uncle Fred was next, and then Aunt Florence was next, and Uncle Oscar was next. And Aunt Nixie was the last one, or vice versa. I don't know about Aunt Nixie and Uncle Oscar. How about uh, Fred? Uncle Fred was, uh, let's see, Daddy and Aunt Nettie, Aunt T and Aunt Nettie, and then Uncle Fred. He was the fourth child. So. Boy, if you could get down there and read some of that genealogy stuff that he'll make. Oh, well, Grant Paul Shader's brother married in New York, and he came down, Uncle Theodore, and he came down to, to Pineville, and he lived there for a long time. I think he was living there when he died. And his, one of his daughters, I don't know where she came in on the list, but uh, she married a Tannehill from over there at Winfield. But she, they lived in, in Urania for years, because when your daddy was working up well, there, one of your first cousins. yeah, uh, no, she was daddy's first cousin. She's my second cousin. Uh, she used to come in the store when I'd be in there a lot of times, mainly in the in the market, meat market. But I never did let her know. I spoke to her and she'd speak, and but that was it. And uh, she married Dora. Her name was Theodora, and they called her Dora. Theo's name was Theodora, and they called her Theo. And, uh, uh, I, didn't, I never did let her know that I was kin to her at all. Mm -mm. Or that she was kin to me. Because she was one of these that had a nose up in the air all the time. Yeah. So, anyway. And Mabel and Terrell didn't have any use for us at all. And I think Aunt Barbara had taught them that. But um, well, they, uh, they, until Theo... Grandma Chate was kind of a black sheep in the family, I think, because of drinking. Huh? I think Grandpa Chate was kind of a black sheep in the family, because of drinking. Might have been, I don't know. It does. Anyway, um... When Theo uh, finished high school, no, Theo was in high school in her senior year, and one of the girls in her class asked Mabel, was she related to Theo, and Mabel told her no, she wasn't. Well, they knew that, that Mabel was lying, because they were the only two shakers in, in there. There were no other shakers in there. I don't know of any shakers in, in Pineville, around Pineville today. But anyway, after Theo finished college, got a degree, went to teaching. Well, she didn't get the degree until after your daddy died. She had to go back one year and make up that year that she had missed. I remember that until we stayed with Grandma. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, Mom and Daddy raised the three of you because your daddy died when uh, you were three. No, well, let's see. One, three, and five. You were five years old. Tom was three years old, and AJ was one year old. Yeah, well, I can, I can remember the feeling. And and after that's when uh, she went back. She had to go back to teaching because they had passed a law. The, the state board, state board of education had passed a law that married women women couldn't teach, even though they were widows and had children to support. And if that wasn't a ridiculous law, I'll never, I've never seen one. And uh, anyway, she, of course, didn't have the money to go back. Well, she managed to get it. And Jack wouldn't pay, finish paying for college. Well, Jack never did work, Joe. He's your daddy, and with all due respect. I thought you said she went back to college after he died. She did. That's what I'm talking about. 
she had to go back to, and get that degree so she could get a job to make a living to raise her three children. Yeah, he wouldn't pay for it because he didn't work. He was dead. No, this was before he died. During the time before he and when they got married, maybe you don't want all this in your in your. No, I don't mind. It's it's what happened. Uh, well. So we go down there, and of course they was with me, Tom and AJ were. Tom and Joe, I mean. And they didn't want to give me anything. They didn't want to let me have it. They finally relented before it was over. I was standing there wondering what to do, and they finally decided to go ahead and let me have what she sent me down there for. It wasn't much. I don't remember what it was. But I do remember them. At first, they refused to let me have it. Now that, I, I they're all gone now, aren't they? Well, I yeah. They're all gone, aren't they? Yeah, they are. Uh -huh. I'll tell you one thing, when they went down there to, to your mother's funeral, I gave them cold coffee. I spoke, but that was it. But Aunt Kate, she's like, <laughs> fine old southern aristocratic family. That was Eleanor Duncan. Her husband was a, an architect. Yeah, your mother couldn't do better than marrying him because he was from a fine He's old... Something else I remember. Southern aristocratic family. I remember I was down there one summer and we were all up in the fig tree. Me and Joe and Tom. I think AJ was too small to climb up there. But I'm pulling these green figs off. There's thousands, millions of figs on the street. Can you get his voice on this? Yes. So, I popped this pig off a deal, you know, and this white milk started to do Second, yeah. Daddy, I play the game. I'm going to paint Joe with this stuff. Man, nobody told me this makes you itch. Oh my God. And I guess I had about half his face painted and his arms and everything. Boy, he broke out and Bill West all over. Now it's time to Every, get him, Joe. <laughs> everywhere that, that, you that to Joe? fig milk. That, huh? Oh, you don't you know that? Joe, you know you play the game. I'm going to paint you. You know, I'm pulling figs off. Man, I mean, you that, you know, how old Joe? Everywhere that fig milk touched him, he broke out. Oh, how old was he? I have an aversion to fig trees. <laughs> <laughs> how old was Joe? Well, he's about seven. Your dad's about six seven years seven, older I than guess. he is. Yeah. Joe said he was 62, and yeah. I told him that You see, you could have gotten him back years ago. Oh, I, well, I paid him back. I used to sit uh, there and invent stories and tell them stories, and they'd sit there and listen to me for hours. I'd make them up as a winner. My, my new son-in-law <laughs> is uh, May 20, kind of a 29. Tell them Brer Rabbit-type stories, and I think that my son was more monkeys, though, wasn't it? <laughs> Do you remember that? I remember the stories, but I don't remember the subject. <laughs> His birthday. You probably sit there. <coughs> oh, yeah. They sit there fast. They do little kids, you know. And story's a story, you know. Well, I didn't try to pass it off as truth or anything. My wife and I still there, but I didn't try to pass it off as truth. Yeah. Entertain them. You told us about the time you got those wild Indians on Bates Hill? No, I don't think I should. Yeah, Joey, it would tickle him on the death for you to go down there and ask her to let you read some of that genealogy. Did you call that?